apologize that we're starting late. Uh, we had an SAU meeting prior to the uh, Farmington School Board meeting that ran a little over, so we apologize for that. Please stand for the pledge. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Public participation. Do we have anybody from the public that would like to speak at this time? Never popular at the beginning anymore. It's always popular at the end. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll go into approval of minutes. Uh, I'll entertain a motion for public session of May 2nd, 2016. Sorry. So moved Sorry. by Mr. Frieda. Mr. Petrie seconds. Uh, errors or omissions? I noticed on page three, who's doing our minutes tonight? You. Cynthia and I'm back up. Okay. <laughs> oh, does Cynthia know she's taking them now? Um, was that? Page three, this was the one I thought, Mrs. Cardinal, you were going to, but we're going to have. This is the one that uh, Kelly can't be at. Yeah. Are you going to do minutes, or would you prefer Miss Sparks to do that? If if Miss Sparks can do it, that would be wonderful. Okay. Simply because I'm not an effective. Um, okay. Yeah, you, you should be. Well, it's hard. Well, yeah. Uh, I noticed on page three, Miss Sparks, uh, under approval of minutes. Not the motion, but the paragraph underneath. Mm -hmm. uh, just that it says Miss Shagden. <laughs> no one's lucky enough to have that title yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, others? Uh, yeah, on page 12, if I may, um, the second motion on that page, it said Miss Cardinal made a motion that the board level fund from the 2015-16 fiscal year. Um, I think it should also say to the 2016-17 fiscal year because the way that motion reads, it, it looks as if the motion is to add an administrator to the current year and that's not at all what it is. It's to okay. um, add the administrator back into next year's plan. About three quarters of the way down the motion. Okay, so adding in after fiscal year to 2016 Correct. And then keep the rest of the Keep the rest of the And I believe, um, I watched back the video, and I believe I, I even clarified to say it's so next year's budget um, has for three schools to not share two assistant principals, just to, like, clarify. Um, I had said next year's budget, uh, the motion is to put the AP into next year's budget so three schools do not share two APs. Everything else looks good. Um, page 10 at the top under the Donald Trump discussion, um, four lines down from the top where I was explaining that we were going to have a joint school board meeting with the selectmen. It says that the town administrator had said that the school board should review it first. Um, actually, that was the select board chair, Mr. King. Any other errors or omissions? Um, I, I, if we could look at just page eight, just as an example, and, I, and this is something maybe we could just mention to Kelly. Um, I'm not sure we need to have that much space. Like the spacing in these minutes are. Um, I, just I don't think she needs to add this detail. I think she can just attach yeah. there. If you just make a note in these minutes that we're gonna, you know, maybe mention to her about the spacing of some of the, uh, some of the. Uh, paragraph spacing because it's really a, this just seems like page eight is an example of right. kind of a waste of paper but just attaching the report he sent is effective right. it right. doesn't necessarily right. have to right. okay anything else hearing none on call for a vote all those in favor aye, aye. As, amended. as amended as amended sorry any opposed no okay unanimous okay uh, Non-public session one, which are sealed minutes that I passed out to you. Can we read you in non-public and May second? And can we table those well, so we can review them? You can read them. You can't talk about them. That's 
That's all. Right. Table. Motion to table. Yeah, please. Second. Second by Joe. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. okay. New business. Carpy Christopher Carpenter Scholarship Fund. I'm excited to hear about this. Yeah. We have a request to establish. Um, initial donation will be five hundred dollars. Um, it's very nice on behalf of these individuals to offer funds. The funds will be placed in the expendable trust and managed by the trustees of the trust fund. Okay. Motion to accept. Uh, motion to accept by Mr. Petrie. Second. Second by uh, Mrs. Morin. Mr. Jazokas, I saw you go to the mic. Did you want to talk a little further on how it just came about? Or? Yeah, I can. And, yeah. and uh, if you have any questions, I can answer those. Um, upon its passing, I was contacted by Sarah Brown. Sarah Brown is a former uh, health and wellness teacher here at Farmington High School who uh, started her family and decided to be a stay-at-home mom. Uh, she had contacted me uh, and said that there, uh, she would like to begin the process along with some of the alums uh, in, in Chris's honor. And so we're certainly excited for that uh, so that his his legacy can continue on. Um, they're in the process of putting together some different fundraising, uh, things such as a 5K uh, walk or run in the fall, potentially a, a wiffle ball tournament in the spring, um, and things like that. So um, they do have, they have submitted the criteria for that. Uh, it is for a student athlete uh, that has overcome some, uh, some things in their lives uh, that will continue either in a four-year college or university, uh, and that person would be studying uh, something in the psychological behavior health degree. So uh, the hope is to try to uh, get this going this year. Um, the deadline might be a little bit difficult, especially at this late stage, but we'll certainly try to uh, get that rolling for uh, this graduation year. Any other questions or comments? I have Mrs. One. Mullen. Do we have an excess of $500? It says to give $500. Yeah. They, uh, in talking with Sarah, they're, they'll make an initial donation that exceeds that amount. So, Mrs. Mullen. The cr under criteria, it says maintain a 2.7 grade point average during the first semester of freshman year. Correct. So just freshman year, that's the only year that counts. Well, it'll, it'll be dispersed at the end of that, at, well, like most of the scholarships, mm -hmm. so once they come back uh, at the end of the first oh, yeah, okay. freshman Sorry. year in college. Yeah. Thank it's you. Yep. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Mr. Petrie. Yes, uh, Mr. Jazokas, could you explain what it takes to establish a trust fund like this in case other people yep. are interested in... Uh, they have to be, I know they have to be approved by the school board. Correct. There's, there is an application that they, they fill out, uh, and part of that application process is to give us um, what, what the cause is, the criteria that goes along with that, um, the um, specifics in terms of what the applicants who are applying for the scholarship are for. Um, what we do is once we get that uh, application, um, we, I have a conversation with those individuals just to make sure that we're all on the same page. Um, and then what I do is I forward, then forward that off to the school board for their approval. Uh, once it's approved, that will go to the trustees to set up the account and get that going. So once, once it's approved by you, uh, further conversation will happen with the trustees. So. Thank you. And our, obviously our scholarship committee will be the ones who will review the applications and make the decision as to who will be awarded that scholarship at graduation. I have a scholarship question, but it doesn't to this, so Any other further co questions about the Carpy Scholarship or comments? Um, just one uh, minor one, if it hasn't been thought of yet. W at the time that it's time to disperse payment to the recipient, um, has it been discussed whether the check will be made out to the institution or to the student? Um, it, more often than not, it goes directly to the school. Okay. Um, it depend a lot of times, too, it, Mrs. Cardinal, it depends on the school and, and their process for billing. Uh, in some cases, the student is already paid for that semester, and so we're able, we would then cut the check for that, that child. But what we do is we request the transcripts. They don't have to be official transcripts. And then once we see the transcripts and the child has met that criteria, then we will send off to the trustees the fact that this person has upheld their side of it. And then the trustees at their next meeting will approve it. And then the check will be sent. Great. Thank you. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. I just have a quick scholarship question for you, Matt, before you sit down. The class of 2016 did a um, <coughs> bingo 
and they raised like six hundred dollars. Do you know where that where scholarship that money went to? I don't know at this moment. I can I can take a look at that. I don't know what they've allocated that towards. Okay, thank you. Yeah. For the new business, Mr. Petrie. Yes, I'd like to make a motion that uh, we have a goal in this district of achieving uh, our status as, uh, as ranked by the Department of Education, of uh, being in the top 10% in 10 years, I'm sorry, five years, and top 10% be the top school in the state in 10 years. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Cardinal. Discussion. No discussion um. on Well, it's it's just that this has been brought up before. I think we need a goal, a, a goal that everybody, when they do something in this district, that they know what the goal is. I know we, you know, we have kind of a, you know, we all want to do something. We all going to get better, but we ought to have a goal to achieve. Right now, 76 out of 82. I, do, I, I think we can do a hell of a lot better than that. There's a lot of effort that goes into what we do here. And we got to keep our eye on the kids. The kids is what's important. So that's what we need to do. We need to, we need, and every time you do something in the district, I don't care if it's me, a uh, business administrator, a teacher, if we know what the goal is, I think it's easier to, to, to achieve that goal. Um, you know, I think this is one. Sorry, I know you again. Um, I second this because uh, I think it's one step in the right direction. I think we have to have um, multifaceted um, goal setting strategy uh, around different measurements of success. You know, we have our ranking by the DOE. We have. Um, you know our percentage as we rate uh, when it comes to our standardized test results we have one other example is a scoring as it relates to real estate in our town um, that is probably something that's a lot more subjective however it is something that's real and tangible and relates back to um, you know our economic status as a town as well our, and how our school relates and I mean our district um, ties into that so I see nothing, no harm in setting this one goal, but I, I, I do think that as a board, we need a, to have some sort of a session where we strategize what other goals pair well with this one. Mm -hmm. Mr. Frieda. I was just going to comment that it, it, I, I agree with the having a direction and, and everything is sort of, uh, everything that we do and everything that anybody does sort of follows that pathway, but that really is more for the mission statement, what our mission is. Um, these kinds of things are great, but uh, if we don't make the five-year goal, then everybody feels awful, and <laughs> you don't even try for the 10-year uh, position. So it's, I, I would rather develop a, a mission statement that is, that is a good, lofty mission statement and that we can point to all of our actions to achieving that mission and not necessarily uh, making us in competition or making it about rank. I would like to make it about achievement in general and not necessarily about rank. <coughs> this is more. I, th I think if, if that's going to be our goal, I think we have to have the steps that we're going to take to make it. So I would agree with, with Angie that if we have this lofty goal, then we need to know what the steps are to achieve that goal. What do we have, what do we have to add to what we already deliver that's going to get us there? Mr. Uh, we need to, once you set, once you achieve, not achieve, I wish it was achieve a goal. Once you set a goal, then you make up a plan to achieve that goal. And what you do, you have feedback loops, all right? In other words, you're always asking yourself, is this going to achieve the goal or fulfill the plan, all right? And if you keep asking yourself, before you know it, you're finding the process. And at some point, we should achieve a much higher standard in ourselves. And, and yes, everything is me measured by academic achievement. If you don't believe it, you look at the DOE website. It's, I mean, it's, you know, who, 
Wait, wait, what's the first question? Well, where, where do we sit in Smarter Balance? Where do we sit in the Act scores? Where do we sit in NECAP? It's, it's based on it. Is, it. is it tough sometimes? Yeah. But that's, that's what we should be asking ourselves because that's the measure. What's the best school district in the world or country in the world? Finland, so they say. Is that realistic? I can, I can show you evidence where it isn't. Actually, we're doing pretty well according to, uh, in, in reference to the rest of the world. But we need to, we need to set our goals here or that goal. And then, uh, and then devise a plan, a strategic plan. I mean a real plan, not something that you put on the shelf and leave for year after year that, like ours has been, collecting dust, and it doesn't really get where we want to be. Any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed. Well, uh, Mr. Freeman, opposed. Thank you. Okay, old business, update on food service bid. Do you have a copy of that which we uh, opened this morning, Lori? Mm -hmm. um, I included this in the, uh, the Google Docs, my memo, as well as the uh, backup for um, the financial reporting from three of the bidders. Uh, my memo identifies that on March 18th we had to go out to public bid. Uh, for our food service program because we have a material change in the staffing of our food service personnel uh, because they are no longer part of the paraeducators bargaining group. So with that said, um, seven proposals were sent out during the month of April. Um, I met with three of the, the companies um, who wanted to come through and take a look at our facilities. Um, we're very impressed by um, how well our facilities are kept, by the way. Um, and also went over records, data, um, and information that they would need uh, over, above, and beyond what I provided them. So we received uh, three bids this morning at 11 o'clock. Uh, the Abbey Group out of Enosburg, uh, Vermont. Cafe Services, who you presently have, also known as Fresh Picks from Manchester, New Hampshire, and Chartwells from Boston, Mass. Um, I've just included in my memo um, what the weighting is of evaluating each of the proposals because the Depart Bureau of Nutrition will be asking for this information. I'm not looking for you to um, make a decision this evening at all because there certainly is a lot of information to digest mm -hmm. as well as what's in those boxes on that back table are all of the RFPs. Okay. <coughs> Um, I am in the process of actually taking the numbers and taking a look and seeing what they project for revenues. That's a critical piece. The revenues need to be realistic because we do have a reduction of 130 students leaving. Um, so with that said, I'm looking to have you read through this material. Um, in the next, by Thursday, I will have a spreadsheet for you, or possibly even Wednesday, a spreadsheet for you so you can take a look and see um, where all of the companies um, line up, as well as taking a proposal. We'd like to be taking the notebooks home with you and do some light reading. I'd like to have you table this and bring it back at your Monday, June 6th meeting for a decision. Motion to table. Second. So, Mr. Petrie, second by Mrs. Moore, and all those in favor of tabling. Aye. <coughs> Budget review. Don't forget to take a book home with you tonight. Or three. Mm. Yeah, let's see. Um, They're buying Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, thank you. Which you have this also in your Google Doc. This is from um, a recap of the general fund budget for a 16 17 year. And actually, this is, if, if it has, does everybody have access to? You do. Okay, because I also have some extra copies too. I know the public has inquired in the past. So, you know, thank you. And essentially, what once the budget is adopted um, by public fund? vote, excuse me? What's the name of this fund? 
What is it named? This should be, let me pull up the drive here. General fund. General fund budget. Well, um, bear with me, let me just pull up. Pull up the drive. Project here. Um, should say 1617. I know it was um, uploaded um, this morning. Um, let's say. Hmm. I read it. I, I saw it. <laughs> I saw it in here too. Yeah, I did see it. I don't Is know what she saved it under. Memo General Fund Financial. Whose, whose idea was it to use these things anyway? I have I hard have copy. Two. So much better. Well, Is it this one? It's, yeah, it's just I, we I actually do a have copy if you want a to lot of it. documents. Um, it's just in my machine's a little bit. Memo slow. General Fund. That's um, what date? May 13th. I well, there's two okay. of the same document. Two pages. Sorry. Hmm. But I, I did read it. Mm. You know what? You emailed it to us. I did, but I also had it saved on yeah. the. Um, okay. Do, can you ex take it from your email? Yeah, that's but they also have a copy. We got a call. Are you? Yeah, it's right here. Okay. I don't have yep. access to the drive. I don't need to put it on. Okay. Is everybody set to follow along yep. at least yep. at this Definitely. point? Okay. Sorry, folks. Yes. Um, <coughs> <coughs> so the sixteen seventeen budget, once the once the public voted and approved it in March, essentially. It, it, the bottom line is approved and to actually start expending from the budget really does not actually happen until June but they are encumbrances for planning out the school year ordering supplies to have them delivered in July and August you never take delivery until after July 1st so with that said also a biggest biggest piece of your budget I think about 83 percent of your budget is your salaries and benefits um, and those get entered by way of contracts as we go through the whole nomination process um, and entering the contracts and checking balances and things like that so it's really is um, it, fluid it's an ongoing task as we look at each one of those contracts and get them entered into the proper cost center mm -hmm. so back in December 5th um, the budget presentation there was a slide slide number three had three three major components that was um, titled you know work to be work to still be completed and the first item listed on that was um, the SAU budget was to be finalized so originally at December 5th it was uh, originally proposed at $953,698 um, through um, the process and leading up to your first session your deliberative session um, there were cuts made to the SAU budget so that the bottom line is is $895,700 with that said attached in this are all of the individual lines for the SAU budget. It's no longer just one line, a lump. You have to show and measure that budget, the wages, the FICA, et cetera, et cetera. So by looking at that attachment, um, the highlighted lines. What's the fund code, if you would? What's that? What's the fund code? Um, well, it's well, it's still going to be fund town. It's general fund operating budget. So if you start and with sub. line 425, Um, let's see, line, page, page 17, line 425. And you notice the first line in there, workshops, conference, SAU, $220. So, 
So anything for the SAU is location 7B. Okay. So in other words, the entire line by line as was presented to you um, at a December 5th budget session and what was also online um, now minus there was one position that you cut from the SAU office a 40 40 hour a week position all of those lines are now individual in this budget okay so that addressed the, that first piece the second piece was to complete the negotiations with the teachers union on the school care health plans um, I think just included my narrative of in this memo of that the early negotiation sessions um, this is prior to December 5th we were looking at a savings of something like three hundred twenty four thousand five hundred fifty nine dollars um, based upon what uh, the consultant was looking at and anticipated savings um, that was a, a certain number that was recommended to us to actually cut from the budget uh, from health insurance um, as we continued our discussion um, and evolved into a, a negotiations through a series of meetings with um, uh, school district the school board um, as well as um, union representatives the final savings um, was $234,792. We've still held fast that that the cuts, the reduction in force to make up for um, um, losses in revenue is still, uh, and to this day, f um, eight and a half reductions in force were applied to the budget as of December 5th. Okay, that's a redu the reduction in force. Um, those employees were notified um, by April 15th um, something to keep it keep in mind though is that should an employee this is why I say that the budget can be fluid at this point if someone resigns and someone else who is a reduction in force has those credentials and can move into that position then that reduction of force would bring them back um, so um, just keep in mind that the column on the left hand side where it says that it's the adopted budget that number statutorily can never change we, I can never go in there and change those numbers that's as adopted but you have a second column there that shows amendments and those are the budget budget adjustments that if we need to reallocate something let's say from supplies to textbooks for recodification Mr. Petrie Yes, so what do you anticipate the fund balance? This year's fund balance? On the SAU side. Uh, Seems we're right in that area. Right well, um, Oh, actually, actually this, is, this is going in. This is 17. Yeah, um, <laughs> right. This is your 16, 17 for Farmington. Um, your well, fund balance is actually going to be extremely tight for the SAU. Mm -hmm. um, because we have had some unanticipated an unanticipated change in the SAU the past few months <coughs> so I mean I could speak to that a little bit I don't want to be throwing out numbers but right, well, it's very very tight no, it's very I, tight, yeah, very tight. And that's, you're not that's, seeing that's all I need to know <laughs> you're, you're, you're not seeing um, what you would have seen last year um, when they closed out the books Thank you. So, nothing close to that um, so um, one thing we want yes. to say is, you know, negotiations on the MOU on the health care plan were not completed until April 23rd. They were all right. going right. Um, after the notification period you know, required by statute of April 15th. But people were notified on April 12th, and many of them were also noticed verbally in weeks before even though we did not have a completed agreement. So where we ended up with December 5th, we cut 324000 from the budget. Um, and then through the negotiation process, um, final savings was 234000 meaning that we do have a budget gap this year of $89,767. Um, 
I, I do have a recommendation as we go further on into the agenda. There may be a way, a method that we could um, mitigate that, and I can talk to it when we get to that topic. Um, but the third piece that we identified in that PowerPoint was um, reaching an agreement with the paraeducators. And there were ongoing sessions through the month of December, toward the end of December, and that um, uh, warrant article number four was approved, uh, $94,753. So I hope this memo addresses um, where we are going with the 16-17 budget. Um, and if not, obviously there's more that could be. Does it, does it account for the reduction of um, the administrative assistant at the SAU office? I thought that was the 89000 no, that eighty-nine thousand is a difference of health health insurance, specifically right. health insurance negotiated versus what was cut. The um, you actually did not fund um, I the, that uh, the gap transition right. coordinator yeah. and an SAU position. That's the bottom line okay. of your budget, and that was reflected um, in the general operating budget. Okay. Yeah. Mr. It's a BG? coincidence that both numbers said 89,000. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes. Uh, Sorry. I thought I saw an email about pre buying some oil to uh, against this budget. We're going to talk about that. Oh, That's okay. Because the price of oil right now is, is in flux, like from $27 a barrel to uh, around 45 I heard today, mm -hmm. which is okay. not good news. Mm -hmm. Which is what? Not good news. Not it good news. went from 27 okay. to 45. Okay. Um, we, we locked it in. I'll be glad to talk about that. I have done oh, some yeah, homework. I, I um, but yeah, it's a good, <laughs> it's, a, it's a hot topic. You were asking for. Yeah, I mean, ideally something that the public would see also, um, just so that they know, you know, where we're at because we were presented in December with so many unknowns and then even at the time that the budget was voted on by the public there were unknowns understandably and I think um, thank you Mrs. Verbal I think you did a fantastic job of explaining all of that right now about why it's so fluid um, and I think this does describe I'm excited to hear about the ideas of how to mitigate you know the gap I don't know if um, Mr. Chairman, if you want to, wanted to open for questions on this specifically from the public at all. Do you wish all? us to do that now? Yeah. Right at the end. Or if you want to wait for public participation. Um, it's your choice. No, I can ask now. Was there anybody in the public that had specific questions about anything that was presented? And if you do, I could ask you to take the microphone. But this is really a presentation <laughs> that we, we wanted to have, so. Um, Just so that people at home can hear your question. They may have the same one. Uh, Laura Vittorio, so um, my question was when we had our, our forms at the delivery session, it said that there was a uh, special ed positions that were cut at Henry Wilson Memorial School, and it just says teachers here is, I'm confused by that, like it says a district-wide high school, what, no, it says a um, district-wide special education teacher. Well, the one we had in January said a special ed teacher at Henry Wilson, and that's not on here. There, there was a position eliminated district-wide, and then I believe there was also a motion um, later on for made another one. And later to reduce in the special education position at the high school. So um, my other question is, so it looks like there's this three teachers at Henry Wilson and no teachers at the high school. How many teachers did the high school lose the previous year? I guess my question in broad is, did it, each school lose an equal amount of people over the time? Yeah, you can't do no. that one. Well, I would, well, not totally equal. Um, were there, was it five positions at the high school that were eliminated in the 15, 16 year? And when I say elimination though, some were retirements. Some, retirements. some were retired. So really, it did not mean that um, employees were lost their position. I should say. The idea of of having the cuts and doing the cuts at the high school, 15, 16, and not filling those jobs um, was actually part of our two phase, two phase out with two year phase off plan um, with for Middleton leaving. So it is. Um, as close and as feasible as we could do it without impacting sizes and classrooms. Um, 
but at the high school level it also took into what we have to offer yeah, for, right. for high school to be right but doesn't Henry Wilson have the most amount of students it doesn't actually I don't no, think actually, I think, we'll I think be it's going forward after with middle Valley school okay. well actually Valley View going forward we'll have four four ten um, with the kindergarten so I think the middle school and the high school is probably pretty equal you know what your numbers are? Mm -hmm. well, not the projections were that the high school would be 288. Right. Henry four. Wilson was four something. Four or five. five. Yeah, but you four can't, five. you may only have eight students in a class in the high school where you, you're going to have 20 in the at Memorial Drive. I mean, and it's, you know, you need to, you need to offer certain subjects and you're not going to have full classes. Thank you. Any other questions from the public? Okay. Any other questions or comments for Lori? No. Thank, Thank you very you. much for doing Thank this. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you going to talk about 1516? Was there anything in particular that you wanted to? So we're going to just. Well, I have done your 1516 uh, financial report. Oh, we can get, we're going to want us okay. to do that later on the financials. Um, actually, yeah, where, wherever you want to, we can, I okay, mean, we'll, included we'll in that is about oil. Okay. So, oh. whatever works for you folks. Let me do that one in the financials. Okay. Uh, digital signage, part three, take three, by Rick <laughs> Bailey. <laughs> Tonight I actually have a video to show you. Oh. It has an example of uh, a digital signage in K through 12 school. <clears throat> but if my memory serves me well, I think it might actually be a university. But still, get it kind of gives you the same idea, you know, as far as what you're looking for, and what it can do. Well, that's warming up. You know, out of fairness to you, I don't think that you were part, my guess is that you were not part of the initial uh, uh, work on this grant that talked about this sort of engagement piece. Correct. You just have been <laughs> the, the, order. The, the guy that has to present it. So, right. so, so, you know, in fairness to you, I want to say, it, you know, I've wanted to hear sort of a, a joint effort here of, of administrators or whoever. I mean, there's got to be some building principals that wanted this in their building still. Right. And this just didn't come from the tech director. No. So I've wanted to sort of hear from everybody involved in this engagement piece. Right. <laughs> well, the, the grant, didn't the um, request for the grant go in in December? December, December. Right. with the building principals during November right. um, and with representatives from the DOE yeah. um, during November and December about things the schools were looking to do and the funds that were available and this was one of um, the items that came up. Um, I will leave it to Matt is the one who's still here. Um, Jessica's predecessor was part of those discussions yeah. at the Henry Wilson level as for what they were looking to use them for. Yeah. But I, I thought you were included in that part because that's how you went out to Nim for NIMVIX, the, you know, grant, what yeah. to get? No, I was never, th th this was, um, we actually started talking about this two years ago. Yeah, um, it was just something that uh, I'm guessing that you and Steve talked about. And then Steve asked me to find a solution. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Did you say it's a solution? Yeah. Upgrades. Oh. Do we want to do something else while we wait for that? We can wait.
wait. We can kind of jump around here. Well, that's woman. Is it going to take a little while, Rick? Shouldn't take too long, but. Okay. Then again, it's black and white. All right, well, that's all right. Why don't we jump to policy review and policy process? What I am working on right now is a complete. Um, delineation of every policy you have and one its age of in last inception or renewal was I had hoped to have this done some time ago and unfortunately uh, my health intervened <laughs> um, I will have that for you by the next meeting okay so that's still in process it's it'll be done for the next meeting okay. as well there are some suggested uh, New Hampshire school board uh, um, policies uh, that came out in mid-April, uh, which I will include in that. Okay. Did you have something to say? Well, I, I was looking on our drive, and there were a bunch of policies that we had that we had gone through that were listed on the drive that were up to date. So, have you seen those? Yes. Okay. I have. I think I have the complete list, but okay. So I will put the date of either its inception or renewal, the last date okay. that it was renewed, like those that you're discussing. Okay. Why don't we jump ahead to financials then? Okay. It's still warming up. Sure. Oh, I, I have a uh, issue. Mr. Petrie. That uh, bill that uh, on wearing the uniform, I, I don't know if you've got the word, but that did get signed by the governor will be able to wear their uniform. Graduates will be able to wear the uniform at graduation. And we are including the one uh, individual that has made the request uh, to walk in the uniform. We're including that individual. And there's a second individual from the high set program that we are also including that met the threshold or showed a lot of improvement and want to encourage that. Okay, financials. Okay, so included in your packet is um, um, my memo um, dated May 13th, um, identifying some of the questions that you had at your last board meeting about uh, negative variances um, uh, in the financials. Um, and uh, for example, workers' compensation, uh, the uh, annual budget that we budgeted for is $84,105. Um, in the time that we were developing the budget, making the transition over to Primex um, and the actual premiums that were coming in, we are in fact um, uh, $8,304 um, short. Um, however, Primex that works off of um, a, you know, a claims reduction basis. Um, if we can still demonstrate that we're reducing our claims. Um, we did have one or two, uh, one that was rather, rather large. Um, so uh, it's covered, I guess, is what I'm saying, is that it's something that I would be looking at on a regular basis. Um, the second one, copy or printer service contracts. Um, actually um, the reason that there is a new <coughs> balance is, is because we really I think we over reduce that budget by 20 percent um, however we can make up for it in another area of the budget that refers to supplies and toner lines um, simply because that's toner is included in the uh, copier contracts um, but yes we are looking to try and economize and not make as many copies um, health insurance. Um, right now we actually have a, a very good size savings um, in health insurance. Now although this number sounds like it's astronomically high, it's 164000 a big part of that is because we did have a hiring gap. Um, you know, administrators, several teachers. Uh, for example, if a teacher comes on board at the end of August, their premiums take effect in September. Well, really, you've got the July and August in there um, of some months. Um, so that's why there is a large savings there. Um, salaries, custodial substitutes. Um, we're currently carrying a negative balance of $15,214. Um, 
another reason for that is that we have had vacancies throughout the year um, at all three buildings um, plus we do from time to time have some overtime that we did we did pre-authorize um, and but when you look at all of the salary lines for the custodials the substitutes and everything you're still ahead by twenty one thousand ninety five um, so if we have a vacancy, we're, we're hiring subs because we can't fill the vacancy? Yeah. Or it's a short-term vacancy? Um, combination, couldn't fill the vacancy. There were a couple um, that even uh, the substitutes last didn't fall. didn't want to fill the vacancy? Um, <laughs> we actually, well, yes, I mean, we, we okay. had, did have conversations. Sometimes people, if they've retired, they may not, they might just not feel that, um, it's something that they want to do. We had a maintenance um, vacancy for some time, uh, for actually a long time, uh, maybe like almost eight months, so it took a while uh, to fill that. Um, so right now, your projected year-round, it's a different format than what you've seen, and what I'm doing is I'm using um, a, a projected um, type of a, a year-round. And you'll notice, if you kind of go far over to the, the right-hand side, the third column from the right shows a sub subtotal, and that's after um, all expenditures and encumbrances have been done. But then that second to the last column is anticipated to expend, and that is really a placeholder number right now that I'm foreseeing that um, we'll have to be paying out substitute teachers between now and the end of June. Um, and, and so I'm putting just placeholder numbers in there. So essentially what you're looking at is um, if you look at what my projected you know, savings in the budget um, after taking out some other uh, expenditures, um, you know, it looks like we've got about 800000 remaining. Um, one of the areas, we can talk about the fuel now, is that when I did the bid about a month and a half ago with Irving, we do have a locked-in rate for next year, and that's at a dollar six one nine. Irving will allow us to prepay uh, with board approval to prepay for the entire oil for next year, and that we've worked out kind of like a reconciliation, uh, like a, a manifest per per drop because it is on a per call drop load that I work with uh, the facilities director on. So um, there's an opportunity for you to actually prepay for the oil for next year at a locked-in rate. Um, I'm encouraging you to do that since you do have the savings in this year's budget. Um, it can also help us to um, manage next year's budget, removing some of the uncertainty. Make up um, that health insurance cap and, and right. then other you know, labor issues. What is that number? Well, that would be the your your what you would pay expend from this year would be a hundred and one thousand two hundred forty nine dollars, um, one hundred one two forty nine. Mm -hmm. um, your health insurance gap is at eighty nine thousand seven sixty seven. A motion that we pre buy the oil at one hundred and one two forty nine. Motion by Mrs. Morin. Second. Second by Mr. Petrie. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any other? Um, rather than my just continuing talking on, if you've got questions about, I feel I have talked enough this evening, but if you have specific questions about variances on the budget. Yeah, I have a, certainly. I have a, yeah. a yearly statement yeah. on our say 15-5. Uh -huh. And a recipient of a grant. This is in concerning uh, New Hampshire School Board Association and the Superintendent Association. They are lobbyists, and that money is supposed to be segregated. It says, shall segregate the state funds in such a manner that such funds are physically and financially separate from any non state funds that may be used for any of these purposes. Maybe we'll keep in separation. That's what we do. That That is what we do. Mm -hmm. 
of the state funds from other monies shall not be sufficient. Is that a motion? Yeah, it's supposed to be done. I mean, it's state no. law. Could I, could I just ask one thing? If you wouldn't mind taking a look at page 17 oh. of um, this particular, your, your current year budget. 16? Yeah, page 17, line 447. Um, and we can, we've got, it says dues, New Hampshire School Boards Association. I'll let you can find that spot. Yep. Um, my understanding is that that's the allocation. What I will do is I will do a drill down and double check those expenditures. Um, I, I recall we have discussed this particular statute. Um, uh, well, it, yeah, what would constitute the physical? Well, it can't be in your regular budget the way it is. It has to, and the reason they do that is so the um, constituents can see that they are they are spending uh, money for lobbyists that are not necessarily for the kids. Uh, there's some issues, uh, and they this is the separated out. Yeah. And that's exactly what it says. But and line by line by line, it has to be separated out. It can be part of your general operating budget as well, long I'm as I'm it's been dis disclosed to the public. Yeah, um, yes. mere, mere bookkeeping separation of the state funds from other monies shall not be sufficient. That's what it says. Okay. So how would it... I'm really intrigued it, how other districts are doing it. Mm. Um, well, it's, a, the, it's an issue. In, in point the, meet mm. the physical... Mm. Well, you um, I know it's dollars. a question that always comes up every year as far as the auditors, you know, who are you actually sending your, your funds to? I mean, for, for years I've always yeah. had that, that question. Disclose who your, um, you know, organizations are, um, like School Boards Association, School Administrators Association, and I was always providing a report to the auditors. Um, I mean, I've been doing that forever. Just a little one sheet report. So, um, so maybe take a look. Maybe uh, put making the lines more distinct. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe uh, lobbyists. You could even call a lobbyist mm -hmm. and and using the same code, but in a different uh, maybe in the front of the budget. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I I don't know what I know. I know it's a problem because we've okay. discussed it at, at in, uh, in the, on the education committee. I'm not. Could I, could I address that um, reporting piece? I think that that might come up with the Bureau of Data Management because that's a, a big piece that eventually funnels right through to the state and the feds. I mean, they have to, they have particular reports that they have to file as well. So um, there's a reason that it is separated right, because out. Because they, so. you know, they don't, not that they don't do a good job sometimes. Most of the time we do, but there's times when mm -hmm. not necessarily in the best interest okay. of the um, If I could look into yeah. that and, and well, see about getting it resolved. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> really good at this way. Nice. Other questions for about financials? Yeah, great, great job on solving that um, produce, I don't know, significant well, gap. Um, by pre-buying pre the oil this year for next That's year. The price Thank is right. I think the big part of it was timing. It's so. been done before. It was done food service uh, a few years back. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh. Mr. Okay. Henderson. Heating. Comes to mind. Thank you, Lori. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Well, there was no second. Oh. What's that? I thought there was a second. No. Oh. Oh. Oh, for the okay. I well, I, I will accept that she will look in a way. Yeah, yeah do we that. don't know that there's a problem to solve <coughs> yet. Well, okay. I know it's a problem. Yeah. It just says it. That's what Sorry, it's I apologize. No, no, no. Okay. You can hide Okay, Rick. That's, that's my, yeah. my take. We're back to the uh, digital signage presentation. I'm like a dog. I mean, dog. You know, like dog. Because I know what they do. Hmm. Think. Huh. Oh, that's good. Hello. 
compatibility issue with the older projector here. So, sorry to show it to you on a small screen, but this is from, I don't know who came up with this name, Magic Box University. <laughs> I can only assume that it's a real university. But this is a, a much larger school, so they're, they're also uh, on their digital signage, uh, putting floor plans and stuff like that. Uh, and from what I gathered reading an article about this uh, project, that of them installing these digital sign, signage uh, displays that um, <clears throat> they put them basically in every lobby of every building in, on their campus. There's no audio on that, right? There is no audio. Um, hmm. They didn't have any videos or, or uh, streaming live events or anything like that uh, or recorded events so this is you know most of the time you're not going to have sound out of these you know except for the occasional video clip <clears throat> so let me rephrase my question um, not specific to this demo but on the digital signage the version that the um, request for, for allocating the funds is um, being made for. It has audio capability. Say that again? Does it have audio capability? Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, they all have audio capabilities. It's just, you know, most of the time you're displaying, uh, you know, presentation, you know, slides or something like that or putting together uh, uh, different types of media, whether it be, you know, a calendar or something like that. Were you, or able to find, were you able to find out if there were any systems in the region? Yeah, there is. Yep. Uh, I didn't find any using this ver you know, this brand, uh, but there are a number of schools using other uh, brands. Who are they? I mean, uh, practically all of the larger schools: Manchester, Concord. Uh, Oyster River, Merrimack Valley. Uh, there's, you know, some smaller schools too. But, uh. What was the number? What was the, um, Lori? What was the figure again? Since I don't have the proposal in front of me uh, for this, uh, I want to say seven, eight thousand. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, three, three pieces of equipment was at a not to exceed seven thousand nine hundred two dollars. We, when we were developing the budget and we're looking at, um, you know, originally we thought that it would be four units and, and based upon MVIX's specs that um, Rick got back, what was it December 16th, 2015, we put in a figure of 23320 as a placeholder because we needed to have something <coughs> in the grant. Um, and if this doesn't get uh, approved, what happened? Well, how does that that amount get reallocated? Does it get reallocated? What happens to it? Yeah, we're be we're beyond the um, we're beyond the modification date amendment date. I should say to the grant. When was the, the amendment date? Uh, was it May May fifteenth? May fifteenth. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we have to spend this amount of money on digital display. That's how that's how the grant was written. The request, the modification of the grant was done last December. We don't spend, 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 we don't spend right. this version. Well, we don't spend it, and it goes back to <coughs> to the federal government to give again next year. Mm -hmm. right. I'm to coerce you again next year. <laughs> well, I don't I don't know. Are there any school improvement grants that are coming up allocations uh, for sixteen seventeen? I don't. I've not seen anything on the. Nothing's federal registers that that are indicating that SIG monies are going to be allocated from the feds on down. We'll get mixed into the other another pool or something, renaming it something else for an entirely different purpose. Is there anybody? Yeah. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to mention that originally the uh, solution was to find a digital, a digital signage solution that we could use the TVs with, uh, like this one here and the one in the cafeteria. So uh, one of the first quotes that I got from uh, the company that uh, MVEX that we got the quotes from, uh, they also quoted me uh, just the players in the software without the displays. The displays, I believe, were what, 3,500 a piece or something like that, because they were commercial displays. Uh, so that's where most of the money is, is in that, in that quote. Um, so basically where I'm going with this is I can, you know, get a, uh, revise the quote and get one that, um, you know, that has just the players and the software without the, without the displays and we can use these TVs for as long as they work. <laughs> is there anybody from the admin team that wanted to speak further about how they see this? You know, there had to be some conversation. I, <laughs> I can't believe I'm back here. There had to be some conversation when you were doing this in December mm -hmm. about what this was going to look like in a school. Okay, there had to have been. Mm -hmm. I still haven't heard it. Mr. Jezokas. This, this process began about two years ago, Joel, where I had a conversation with uh, the former superintendent, and we were talking about the opportunity to be able to display things up in the lobby upstairs, but also potentially in the gym, by the gym, and also in the cafeteria. Um, we're basically the high points of, or the high traffic areas of Farmington High School. The purpose of that was in a, a way of, of getting information out, uh, i.e., this is the lunch menu, these are the athletic schedules, uh, these are the co colleges that are visiting, these are the dates that they're visiting, uh, all those different pieces up there. It could be the lunch menu, it could be the uh, you know, temperature, things like that. Stuff that they see or would see on a daily basis uh, for those pieces of it. You know, we have power school and we have a daily bulletin, but a lot of the kids don't look at the daily bulletin with those. We announce them periodically, but they don't hear that stuff. So stuff where they're there and it's flashing, it's going on a daily basis, they can see it on a, on a consistent basis. Um, and so that process began, uh, like I said, a couple years ago. Um, and we <coughs> talked about it. Rick was part of that conversation shortly thereafter about some of the solutions that we were looking for and what we had hoped for to accomplish with that piece of it and so this is where you know once I was sitting there talking with him and I know that Cynthia was part of that conversation uh, Rick took it from that point and ran with it and where he was you know giving you the presentation that we saw the last couple times around mm -hmm. again for me it's more of giving kids that those visuals but also being able to push out stuff it could be birthdays it could be our student athletes of the month things like that where we get it, get it out there in front of the kids to see and again it's high traffic areas mm -hmm. so in between classes they're going through that hallway upstairs at lunchtime we have three lunches you know from from middle of august through the end of march uh, and even into april you know that athletic hallway is used by a lot of kids so uh, that was what my intentions and my goals were for uh, this piece of it. I also asked Rick to make sure that it was simple to put up there so that we didn't spend countless hours trying to figure out how to get things up there. Um, and so this is what he came up with. Okay. Yeah. And so the proposal is to have two here at the high school. Correct. One upstairs, one downstairs. Yep. One in the athletic hallway. One would be in the hallway and one would be up in the top for you. I would think that your athletic hallway would also be the high the highest traffic for parents correct coming in and out yep. of events yep. okay and the other one is to put it at Henry Wilson in the lobby in the lobby all right any questions from the board that might be elementary school, that elementary school? Mm -hmm. I don't believe that was <coughs> 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 Weren't the grant funds available to support it? So uh, looking at can you move that microphone over a little bit? Just so oh, the sorry. Is heard by the okay. At the time, the conversation on the grant funds we were looking at, Henry Wilson and the high school had the funds available for us to write on that would support something like this. The conversation never came up for Valley View in that it's, um, 
even in thinking it through, it's not as likely you have children walking through the hallway stopping to read a display as you would at the high school and at other places. Um, and we haven't gotten to the point that, that parents aren't in the building that much on a day-to-day -day basis um, as they are, say, this building for athletic events and other events. You have a lot more community in the building. Henry Wilson, given that it's used for um, the 500 Club, for the gym, there's a lot of community traffic in that building. Well, I, I heard that we have messages on Power School that aren't read, and we have something else that wasn't done. I can remember, oh, it, there were announcements that weren't listened to. So where's the evidence that the TV display would be paid attention to any more than the other things that aren't being paid attention to? I, I guess the only thing that I would say is in, in, in I could, I could personally, just just an opinion, could see students paying more attention to something like this because they they live in this digital world where you know this this type of stuff is what they look at most of the time. Well, exactly. So <laughs> if we wanted them to have a visual, put it on the website and they can get it on their phone or their tablets, or or and parents can see it right from home. They don't have to come into the building. If we want to get a display, we don't have to spend two thousand dollars. TV and get one for the elementary school as well. Is there free software that would would do this kind of program? I, it's I know it's grant money and it's free money, but I, I don't want. It, I know that's why. I <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll come up to answer that question. There is there's there's free open source uh, solutions as well, um, but uh, one of the considerations with this whole project if you will, um, wasn't only, f you know, to keep in mind the cost, but keep in mind simplicity. Um, so there's a lot of different solutions out there for digital signage, mm -hmm. but there's a very small percentage of them that I would consider easy to use. And I will <coughs> say I do see the kids looking at the digital signage more. I just, I don't want to spend money just because we have it. Well, right. and, and it well, they will look at it if it's in between classes. Will they be late for classes because they're watching things go by? <laughs> you know, it's also a distractor for some. It has to be used properly, and I think we can use a, a cheaper solution for it that would get us the same impact if that's what you want without spending eight thousand dollars. Mrs. Cardinal, did you have something? Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to know a little bit more about how you determined that that was easier. I watched on the YouTube video that was on there and I think that was put on by Mbex? Mbex? Mbex. No, by that wasn't an Mbex product they were using. Oh. But that, <clears throat> that, that was yeah. a commercial for them. That was not a real university. That's a, an example that they, a software manufacturer put up on YouTube. It was an Mbex though, but. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Um, it didn't look like, it looked like something that a student, if we want students to be the ones that put the information into it, would have to take the time to learn to use well that's the other most of them know how to use PowerPoint already right right yeah that was the that was the other thing with going with a uh, purchase solution rather than a free open source solution uh, because there's somebody you can call and trading and you know those good things but so you talked with students about what would be easier for them to do if there was like an audio visual club let's say oh, no on? I haven't had any conversations with students um, maybe part of the curriculum for the if we haven't if that would fit anywhere in the curriculum <coughs> this sort of project you know marketing telecommunications public we relations anything like that we haven't had that we, we haven't had that discussion mm -hmm. in high school Okay. We should. We want to have the. I, I just. I see. We could get a bigger bang for these dollars if we tied it back to what would the students actually use? What do they want? I mean, they're probably a lot savvier about what equipment is out there. What can you do with a little Apple TV for two hundred dollars? And and I know I keep saying televisions, but if really the only selling point was. For eight thousand dollars, these things would have a three-year warranty versus a television that has one. Let's buy three times the number of televisions and replace them if they fry out. For um, that amount of money, you know. But and then we have backups. 
can that grant money be used for something alternative if it's still meeting the engagement? The digital goal. Mm, it's very, it's the it's very it's what it was to purchase the digital signage. So that is the it's activity. Accepted. My understanding is the only tweaks and changes we can make are if money we have put to different parts of that activity needed to go to a different part, mm -hmm. we could do that, but we can't create a whole new activity. Mm -hmm. But if you buy a TV as opposed to one of these units, it's still digital signage, it's just a different mm -hmm. device. Mm -hmm. Which no, may, so if we have proposals, like I can put it to Joey and see what's viable. Did you and let's put it whomever is going to use it. I'm a big fan of user problem. input. Mr. Beecher, yeah, right. I, I got a question. Is this Wi Fi? So, in other words, yeah. if you want to add, you might want to you find that uh, this area over here needs another TV, so you can just put a unit mm -hmm. to catch the signal, pump it in. Get done, and yep. you could use a TV, and we're good. Right. I think that would probably go. Ahead. Our actual wording is to purchase large screen. We have to put LED monitors up to 55 inches for use in the building for streaming information for students and families. Okay. And then there's another line for the accessories and related technical support, um, the software and what have you, to run it. Those are two separate lines. But it's not saying a specific one, a specific type, a sp any of that. Right. So as long as it meets those criteria, we're okay. And when do we have to finalize the purchase? Sooner rather than later, they'd like them in place within and in use three months before the end of the grant. The end of the grant is September 30th, so it's really something that should be able to be in use during summer school, through the summer, through summer activities. Um, I will say the most recent quotes came in lower than what we had originally put in the grant. So when we were making these most recent changes, trying to do what we needed for this last um, May 15th, we did um, edit the amounts for that activity down to me closer to what the quotes were coming in than what we had originally budgeted. In the grant. So no, also, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I move to take the request to grant what, what was the request it wasn't the request to go for bid because actually you're requesting to um, bypass Purchase. the bid process and well and award only because to this of lack of responses on the bidders right. um, and so, so I move to take that included. off the table yeah it's been tabled oh, since yeah, April 4th it. right <laughs> okay motion to take it off the table second for second, second Mr. Petrie for the discussion all those in favor? Aye. Okay. So it's on off the table. Oh, it's off the table. table. No, it's off the table. table. <laughs> yeah, well. It's it's off the table. It's in our hands. So now we can talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Officially. We actually received um there was also a resident who sent us um did Mr. Pelletier send us I can't find it. I don't have anything. I was just Mr. Pelletier sent us um, something, and Penny's having a hard time finding it. Uh, found, it was, I believe, it was Girl like Scout a group Facebook ones. message or something. Yeah. Oh, that's what it was. It um, was a group. Thank you. Aren't you good? Oh. About offering his, his help. His eagerness to to sort of help with this, you know, seeing that it sounded like the board didn't want to necessarily go that route. Um, you it. know, that obviously that's been his life. Is do you want me to read it? Or just <laughs> highlight it. Um, that he had basically has been has done something similar at his office. Um, he thinks that what's being proposed can be done cheaper, and if you'd like his input in greater detail, please let him know. So we had actually um, mentioned someone had responded. I think it was you, Mrs. Moore, and said yes. you know to contact Mr. Bailey. I don't know if you've heard from Mr. Don Pelletier yet, but no. um, he was um, offering some suggestions because he had done something similar to this yeah. at his Stephen workplace. Also suggestions. Yes, yes, he was. Yes. So, so that's maybe we can. Mr. Pelletier, 500 Boys Club? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. Same. <coughs> I, I don't think we're going to do anything. Do any, make any, make any, take yeah. any action at this point. We don't need to. So put it back on the table. So it's on the table. It's off. It's off the table. We can vote on whether or not to award that manufacturer. 
I'd rather wait and see what else we get, because that might be the best we get. Just saying. Might not be, but it might be. Well, I'd like to see it involve education. You know, teaching kids how to set this th set these things up and give them credit for them. <coughs> Eventually, we're going to have a video, excuse me, department of curriculum that we they can use because I went through these halls and <coughs> I never taught electronics or anything to do with those kind of things. And it actually took me a few years to catch up. We don't have to take any action at this no. point. No. Matter of fact, in 1980, uh, I toured York, York High School, and they, they, they had a visual arts department back, way back then. And it's, it's a way to learn, because some of these kids want hands-on stuff versus, you know, book learning, mm -hmm. common core book learning. All right. Yeah. Um, go ahead. Um, I did get an email on the um, SAU from the FLA um, looking at the building. Um, Larry Gordon said he t contacted Dennis Rosenberry and um, the process for code approval and the actions that need to be taken to add on to the building. He informed me of the first steps needed to apply for a site review. So we have to apply for a site review and bring it before the planning board. Um, the SAU building committee is meeting on Wednesday at 3 o'clock. I seen that one. So, um, I I didn't use a visual. I just went into my. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. Do you have the request for a bid con? Out yet? We have to have for a site review before we can yeah. put out a request for bid. Yeah, we have a new t we're on a new topic item. It's going to be the business. Why you're going to need an engineer? You're going to need <coughs> three. No. Yeah. So. Process people. Who are have Sorry. Data. We Could we give a little more direction to the committee then? Um, and in in light of this, that the bids haven't even um, gone out for yet. Uh, a request for bid hasn't gone out yet. Um, I don't know if we should even bother with all of that um, because I don't see us having the funding to support an addition. But I'd like to see for the committee to go back to the drawing board on, okay, so you have this team of uh, nine people. It will be next year, right? Or is it eight people? Superintendent, curriculum. Yeah. yeah. So let's say nine people. Um, how many can be located in the building as it is now without construction? Not significant construction, no addition. And then from there, for the remaining employees, where would be the next best location for their office within the other three school buildings? Okay, I can bring that to the Essentially divvying up, group. seeing as all are going to be employees of the Farmington School District, yeah. SAU yeah, 61, that. don't and really need to be located in a separate location anymore. And my, my other thought was with any unexpended fund balance, we could also use that towards rehabbing the building to and make it. And we can use that towards the students. I think some of the employees still need to be SAU employees, like the superintendent. Well, you're going to be housed as. Yeah, I mean, school. I'm done. Right. I'm just saying we there have to be a few SAU school. employees besides Farmington. So, what do you think that would be I'll to take it back to the committee sure. and and get uh, before yeah. too much energy is put into this addition, this major construction? effort for us to say we can't afford to do that. Mr. Frieda. Didn't we already vote on accepting the proposal mm -hmm. to put the addition on? No, yes. no, just to go for bid. To just to go for cost. Oh. We voted to go for and bid she's for. Out, it's a lot of work to work, just go for bid. Right, so, but if we voted to go for bid, we probably should do that, or somebody has to. So I'm making, making the motion to retract it. I think, I I think, I think we should still it. go for the bid, because maybe it is within our means. Maybe we need to make it a smaller location. Maybe there's some more conversations that need to happen. Well, this a school district is its own entity. It's an own, an own municipal entity. Mm -hmm. So I would like to, I, I'd like to review the law myself to see what Okay. What uh, if that's really true? It's, I know in the past, the matter of fact, I, I I can cite a case, and I've been on the zoning board for quite a while, off and on, and I know that they put when they put the trailers out here, they the, the, the town 
could not stop it. So I, I would wonder how much okay. we need to plan board or whatever. I, I don't know what if it's right. changed, but right. so I, I would. Can you look into that by Wednesday? Did you did well, you make a motion, Mrs. Cardinal? Or were you going to? Or maybe not. Well, does the committee need us to tell them? Do you want? We want to see one more option before you go out to bed. We already gave the okay to go out to bed, well, so do we have to pull it back? We can't go out to bed until we go before do a standing board. Oh, yes, you can. Why can't you? Are you going to know what to do? What do you know? Uh, you you want to know what to do? with what Larry shared that Dennis Rosemary said that we needed to go before the planning board. We don't have to go to the planning board first because you don't know what you're going to put. You don't know how much it's going to cost to, to, to okay. you know, for the, for the building. So how, you know, is it going to be... You right. might have to pare it down. Right. So you got to have some kind of bid, it, even if it's just a cost per square foot. You know, you have to have some kind of idea what you want to do. And well, what is? Why don't we meet on Wednesday and? Okay, but if you if you don't have to do a site review before you get a bid, mm -hmm. and we've already taken action to get a bid. Why don't we get a bid? But why don't we also have the committee explore the other right. option yeah, too? I'm good with that. You know, and and another thing you got to think about is this going to be a school building or just a office building because the standards are different. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things the committee talked about was that if any time in the future it needed to be a school building. Well, that's we're gonna we have, then right. if we think that way, then we ought to build it to that spec. And that's that's a whole different ball game. So you have another meeting coming up? On um, Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Moore. All right. Um, did you have some? No. Okay. No. Um, Mr. Freedy, you said you you were you were you had some, one other comment to make on something. Oh uh, yeah, I just in, in conclusion about the uh, the display. I think that since we now have a new goal and we have a. a an object to shoot for. We want to try to involve the students. We should maybe have proposals for what kind of device and software and how this will be used yeah. to benefit the students and reach that goal. And buy them off. <laughs> buy the kids off. Yeah. You know. Well, I do, my, I do that with my own kids and it works. Because it may, it may be that we could, use, we could use this equipment, we could have more devices in more locations to really get a better impact on the students and have them be involved rather than getting something that's proprietary. And if we get any that are heavily involved that want to come be part of the, the next presentation, they could come here and help yeah. present the idea. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> just, just a question that came up through a conversation I recently had. Um, at some point in history here, Refrigerators and microwaves were taken out of classrooms. Um, is that a policy? Is that why? Why? When? What's the history on that? Does anyone know? I don't think anybody's been here long enough for that one. I think it was going to be overload of the electrical system. Okay. It could be. It could be. Cords. Yeah, I don't know. Fire safety. Uh, yeah. My my question is, um, can uh, and maybe maybe the maybe the fire chief did his walkthrough and said it couldn't happen, but. I'm just wondering, like, for people that teach science that n sometimes need the use of things that are... Like refrigerators. I was just wondering if that's a possibility for a science classroom. Um, just something to look into, please. I used to keep I, I'm school curious school. about how, it's, how it, we get to the point where they weren't allowed at all, probably because there was they burnt popcorn. They also the property liability trust came in here some reviews of your yeah, building, they may have said no. Um, I've, in a previous life, I have I have seen that happen when they felt that there was just too many um, too many appliances in a building. Um, if somebody what you're mentioning is reasonable. Obviously, a nurse needs a refrigerator. Yeah. And, um, um, could that um, just be looked into to so give hmm. us the history of that a little bit? Yeah. Could we'll you note that, Mrs. We Tyler? We're going to we're gonna get the response on that. History on Thanks. refrigerators and microwaves in the classroom. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I would just say that we you know, recently uh, uh, went to uh, Kingswood Regional High School, the Tech Center, for a, mm -hmm. a joint board meeting. And I'd like to publicly thank the superintendent of Governor Wentworth as well as the, the principal of, of that uh, of the Tech Center. Forgive me for not having their names handy. Um, it was a great meal. 
that was a great um, student presentation uh, about uh, one of the, their newer programs, their uh, uh, early childhood program. Um, and could we send a thank you letter to the district? Maybe, I don't know if that would come from you as a secretary, um, thanking them for the hospitality. Thank you. Public participation. Um, so I was looking over this, sitting over there. It doesn't say, um, and I looked through the line by line budget. It, it on the line by line budget, it has the assistant principal at Valley View um, as cut, and it's not as part of this memorandum. So actually, my question is, is, is Valley View still losing an assistant principal full time? Because right here it says, still remains at four teachers at Valley View. I think it's supposed to say, it says and, but I think it's supposed to be say at, and three teachers at Henry Wilson Memorial School. I'm just curious about where we were as far as the administrative process was with that, and when the $89,767 that still needs to be cut was going to be cut. I know it's non-personnel, but in where that was coming from. We have still, we have still one last assistant principal in next year's budget. But we don't know where, and it's still being discussed by the board. Is that what you're? I have, I have, as a board member, I haven't heard where that cut will take place or what what the infrastructure will look like. I've had my own ideas, but I, okay, I don't, I don't work here. <laughs> <laughs> um, well. Wasn't that person supposed to be notified by April 15th? No. No. That's not a teacher. Only, only a teachers. It's not, it's not, not part of the administrative the contract. Right. Okay. So we still have no idea about the leadership for next year. It's my. Yeah, it's still in work in progress. We got to pick up. Still I would say well, we, we recently had in in re very recently I, I think it was in public session. We recently yeah, had um, we had a discussion about re-adding it. Right. Um, yes. And that motion fa that failed that vote. Yes. Um, but it's I think it's still a work in progress. Um. Okay. <laughs> well, in um. In coordination with that, what about uh, superintendent positions? those being advertised I guess my question is if you are going to be changing administration now is the time to be doing it that's when it's all over at jobs and everything well else. I guess I'll let mrs. Morin maybe make a statement since it came up yeah. <laughs> that so we were going to make earlier we, um, at our SAU meeting today we accepted the resignation of mr. Welford effective um, June 30th so we will be posting for uh, superintendent on ed jobs and on our website Okay, so that's a superintendent position. Mm -hmm. So what about the other administration positions? That's the only one I have for you today. I know okay. that I have I have some ideas that we've been kicking around that, you know, we've just been kicking I guess it's a <laughs> as a parent, I'm very concerned. I will, um, will have a first grader at Valley View Community School and a fourth grader and a fifth grader. And it's very unnerving to me as a parent and as a teacher to not know who leadership will be in the next school year. Placement is being done, classroom teachers, where they're going to be is all being done, and that's very difficult to do with lack of leadership. I guess it's my urging to the board to come to that agreement sooner rather than later. Right now, you have one less assistant principal. Uh, I believe the recommendation from the admin team would be that it would probably not be an assistant principal at Valley View. The board never said that. Um, so right now, your leadership is your principal currently. Okay. Will be your principal next year. Uh, you know, I hope. <laughs> we <laughs> talked <laughs> about some shared leadership. So there is leadership, I guess, is where you're going with that. Right. Okay. Or I guess I should. What did he say? What? <coughs> who's taking care of? I mean, you ha you have a principal who's making decisions for next year. Right. Right. That's uh, why there's no assistant principal at either school currently. 
Well, there's one at Valley View, but there isn't one correct. at Henry and Wilson. Correct. And you, there's nothing to answer to you. I mean, okay. I, I don't. You know, I guess my. I, I, we, you know, <laughs> we do have an, we do have at least one assistant principal's position to still fill. Okay. And that will that will happen. You know, <laughs> that so like it sometimes happens during the off season. I call it, but yeah. Okay. We still have a position to fill, at least one position to fill. And what about the 89767? When is that going to be decided upon? I think we just did with the oil. That's how we is that, that, was, yeah, that was definitely that cover yeah. that. Yeah, it was okay. 89. We made it up with 101. Okay. I wasn't <coughs> sure. Okay. Thank you very much. Anything else from the public? All right. Well, anything else from the board? Yeah, I'm having chicken. Any communications <coughs> on? <laughs> Did we receive any communication from the Board of Selectmen um, regarding that invoice that they sent our school district? Um, I had a brief conversation with uh, the select chair, uh, Mr. Kane, last week, um, who indicated that, um, how do I recap his words? Properly. I think what they're going to ask us to do, they're going to try to draft up a, a memorandum of understanding should something of this nature ever come up again that both boards can sort of agree to. Um, but it didn't sound like that the, the bill would be going any further at this point. That's not what I get out of our conversation. It was going to be more of a you live and you learn and maybe a memorandum of understanding for something like this in the future. Mr. Petrie? Yes, I have. Uh, Somebody from the campaign contacted me, and it's still not a dead issue. So I would, I would not hold my breath, but it's still being talked. So okay. That I'll leave it at that. Any but it is being worked on. Okay. Anything else from the board, Mr. Frieda? And the resolution on the family issue. We're having a meeting again on the 24th. We met with the commissioner. Any resolutions over you? Uh, not at this juncture. Okay. Thank you. Those of you who came out, thank you. Those of you at home that tuned in, our next meeting is June 3rd. No, no what is our next meeting? <laughs> No state Monday, June sixth. Well, this is uh, we have our, we had our yeah. first and second of May, so we will now be on the first Monday in June, which is June sixth.